according to the Bible, give me Deuteronomy 2868, we do have enemies. Now, uh, us in our natural wicked estate, we think somebody of our own people is our enemy. Right. Somebody from this block is our enemy. Right. In this block, in this neighborhood. When that's not really our enemies, we actually have a bigger enemy than what we think we have. Do you, if you had to take a guess, do you know who that enemy is? There you go, brother. When we gotta go to end up. Who, who did this to us? Right. All right. Been battling with these demons, yeah, I'm supposed to fight. I'm trying to see what it's like to take me, so I roll the dice. Look up to no one else, but your house is shy. Yeah, I got real power. Hebrew is a lie. To somebody is not necessarily a sin, but you just giving all your belongings to the heathens, you want to give back to your people. Right. Right. Your people is the the ones that need the stuff that they need it the most. Right. We're the needy. We're the poor. Right. Give me James chapter two and five. We're the poor. We're the uh, fatherless. Now, if you have a bag of chips, you got an extra bag of chips. More might come and say, you know, can I get this? And you say, no, you're a heathen. That's not wisdom. All right, just get, get his a bag of chips here. Hug. All right, or you got an extra dollar on you here. It don't matter. All right, or you got an extra little something on your uh, plate. You give it to somebody. It's not a sin to do that. But you don't want to give all your belongings and you just focus on giving back to the heat. Like like yeah, yeah, I was trying to see, you know, he kind of gave her the cross. All right. You want your daughter to be healed? All right, here, be healed. All right. But again, Christ himself wasn't going out of his way to go to the heathen. You going out your way to go to the heathen to do righteous things for them, I mean, you wasting your time. All right, this is their world. This is their kingdom. Man. Right. They already got a 400 year head start. Again, you want to give back to your people. All right, for the most part, now bring this out, James 2 and 5. Look at James chapter 2 and verse 5. Bring it out. Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not God, have not Yahweh chosen the poor of this world? Read that again. Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not Yahweh chosen the poor of this world? Read that again. Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not Yahweh chosen the poor of this world? So even the Most High, he chose the poor of this world. All right, the Lord could have chose the rich of the world and start doing things for them. But when you look at, examine the Mosai, he always deal with the poor, the needy, all right, the, the underdog, the ones, the Mosai's not choosing the man that's just looks cunning, all right? He's the top man. All right, this man, he's strong. He's the fastest, he's the wisest. No, the Lord choose the people that's on the bottom, that's underneath. The person that you will even least think to be chosen. So read that part again. Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not Yahweh chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Says what? But ye have despised the poor. Read that again. But ye have despised the poor. Right now, a lot of our people, we despise the poor, man. Our people don't give back to another Jake no more. Our people are stingy. All right, they want it, they're greedy. They want everything to themselves. So you gotta get it on your own. All right, no, I'm not sharing. Like the brother was going into earlier, it was a time period, you know, back in the day. Hey, what you need some, you need this, all right, for sure. All right, don't even worry about it. All right, pay me back when you become a millionaire. All right, they not really tripping. Now, you know, certain Jakes, they count favors. Yeah, remember when I did this for you? You got it now. Nah, run that right now. You got it. I did that for you, right? right. I did you a solid. Right. Now you got to run that back. All right? You telling the brother to run that solid back. He doesn't have anything to eat. He's eating sardines. All right? He, he can't barely pay in his bills. And he's got two socks. All right? Don't have, doesn't have a ride to work. And he's saying, yeah, you got to run me that 5,000 back. Damn. All right. That's off, man. Have some type of uh, sympathy, man. We got a question for you. Yeah, we got a question for you, brother. Do you believe in the Bible? We do believe in the Bible. How long have you been a Bible believer? You said what? 
since you was a kid. Now, do you know your nationality according to the Bible? Because everybody has a a, a God given nationality. I'm assuming you're African American, correct? You identified as that. And when you read the Bible, can you find the word African American in there? Well, you can't. African American is a newly created term. Now, who called us African American? Because we didn't come out the womb saying we was African American. Who gave us that term? Do you know? All right, our slave man, our oppressors. Who gave us the term black? Slave man, don't, don't we identify as these things? So our question is for you, brother, all we're trying to do is open up your mind a little bit. Cause you to think about these things because you don't want to be going through your day-to-day -day life and you don't even know what God has called you. If you didn't know, if you see yourself on that sign, you will be a part of God's chosen people. You will be a Hebrew Israelite more than likely from the tribe of Judah. A king on earth. Your people come from kings. We didn't, we're just not a people that just came over here and we just got off the slave ships. We start acting like monkeys and here we are today, shooting and killing each other. No, you're royalty. We go back to something greater. Again, that's the Israelites. Give me First Chronicles 16 and 13. So we got a couple verses before you leave to show you without a uh, shadow of a doubt who you are and what's your purpose on this earth. Because if I ask you what's your purpose on this earth, why did God create you, what would you say? You don't know? How old are you? 18? Okay, read this. First Chronicles 16, 13. Yeah. O ye seed of Israel. O ye what? O ye seed of Israel. Read the one. His servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen one. What is this, brother? His, his chosen, chosen one. Are the Israelites? His, his chosen, chosen one. one. We're the chosen ones, brother. Right. Have you ever, do you feel, have you ever felt like it's just something special about me? You just don't know what it is. You feel that before, right? A lot of people, they don't feel that. That same feeling that you get, like, man, something special about me. I just can't put my finger on it. Everybody doesn't get that feeling. It's because everybody is not chosen. Right? God said many are called, but only a few are chosen. So the Israelites, even when they're born, they're automatically chosen. They're chosen. Uh, they're better than everybody else on the planet. Do you believe all men are equal? What, what uh, gave you that conclusion to that belief? You said what? Okay. Now, I want to use this example. Let's say you are uh, you creating a project and you're creating robots. And you as the creator, you create one robot to be better than the rest of the robots. Is that equality? There's no. So we about to show you what God has done on this earth. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. No. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. You know about Moses, right? Who did Moses free out of Egypt? When Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. You know what people he freed? He freed the Israelites. Right. All right. Again, we will be the descendants of those people. So God is talking to the Israelites. He's saying, you are, you are a holy people. Read one. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. Right. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. To be a what? To be a special people unto himself. Read one. Above all people. Or oh, equal. Above all people. The Bible say. Above all people. That are upon the face of the earth. What's your thoughts on that verse? God said the Israelites are above all people on the face of the earth. Would you agree to that? Again, the Israelites are the people on that side, brother. Look at everything we do. Don't we do it the best? Don't be bad. Who dances the best, brother? Who cooks the best? Right. Who dominates sports? Right. Who sings the best? Right. Who raps the best? Right. Who invents everything? Do you know we invented them there everything? Everything. Who's the smartest? Who's the fastest? Who's the most handsomest? Right. All right. It's us, brother. Would you agree? Even uh, spiritually, 
you had certain men like George Washington Carver, and he was able to talk to his plants, man. He was in tune with the earth. All right, men like Marvin Gaye, talented in the music industry. All right, Motown, that's all us. It's a reason for that. That's how God created us. So that's what he means by we're above everybody else. But how are we living? If we're the chosen people, how are we living today? Where are you from? Markham. All right, you're from Markham. How are we living out there, Mark? You said what? No, you're a race of people. Is that good? There's certain people that don't have to go through gun violence. There's certain races that don't have to, that don't look at their own people with the evil eye. Right. There's certain races, they could go to a gas station, they don't have to worry about getting robbed. Right. Why is it, why is these bad things only happening to us? Why do we see only our people strung out on drugs on the streets? Mom, she bringing four, five, six, seven, seven dudes over the crib and the pop's not there. Women being out in the streets, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. Why is this only us? Why are we the ones getting shot and killed in the streets, brother? It's because we disobey God and his commandments, that's why. For our disobedience, God punished us. And with those punishments, those are the curses that you read about in the Bible. We have generational curses on us. The only way to solve this generational curse is to keep God's commandments. Do you know any commandments of the Bible? Six hundred thirteen laws, such as commandments that we must follow. Right. Especially if you believe in God, you gotta do this because would you say that you love God? How do you show that you love God? We're gonna show you how to love God. First John five and three. First John, chapter five, and verse number three. Ow. By this we know that we love the slacky. For this is the love of God. It says what? For this is the love of God. You the one? That we keep his commandment. That we what? That we keep his commandment. You the one? And his commandments are not grievous. All right, so the way you show you that you love God is by keeping his commandments. All right, we're gonna show you three commandments before you go, all right? Give me, uh, give me the dietary law. All right, you gotta, you gotta repent. <laughs> All right, give me, give me Leviticus 11. Look at Leviticus chapter 11 and verse number seven. And the swine. And the what? And, and the, the swine. swine. You know what swine is? Do you eat swine? It's pig. So bacon, pepperoni, sausage, uh, what else? Chorizo, ham, hogs, ham. Right. Do you eat any of those chillings? Okay, we're doing. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Right. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. What did the Lord say? Of, of their, their flesh, flesh shall ye not eat. eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. So this type of food that God created, God said we cannot eat this. At all. So finding out that this is a commandment, would you be willing to stop eating pork for God? Maybe. Why you say maybe? It's easy, brother. The Lord said no pig. You said what? Right. Well, you can eat clean foods. Chicken, turkey, um, lamb. 
buffalo, beef. Right. But one food that you cannot eat, and like many other foods, is the pork. Right. There's many things you can't eat. Would you eat a rat? Uh, Why wouldn't you? Right. You said what? It is unclean, but before you find out that it's unclean, you naturally wouldn't pick up a rat. If you ask me, the pig is and its attributes are 10 times worse than a rat. The slave, did you know in slavery they used to give us the pig? They used to give the slaves the pig. Right? Pig feet, the crumbs. Because they know that was going to kill us uh, when we eat that food over time. And it, was, it wasn't healthy for us. So a lot of this stuff from slavery is still stem to this day. That's why pig, the pork is so common in our community and our culture. So again, there's many different substitutes, but you want to stop eating pork, all right? Now you eat seafood? No seafood at all. Why, you allergic? Okay, all right. So no, you can't even eat fish. Okay, okay, okay. Now give me Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19? You got two more. And verse 20. Leviticus 19 and verse number 26. You shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall you use enchantment nor observe time. So you can't eat things with blood and when you have your food. And as well, you don't want to use enchantments or observe time. So you don't want to be into, you know, divinations, magic, dark magic, necromancy, um, zodiac signs, astrology. You don't want to be into none of that. All right, you believe in that? Okay, okay. I'll pray some more. Verse 27. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corner of thy beard. But as an Israelite man, you can't shave your hair bald. All right. Now, if you're growing, if you're going bald and you can't help it and your hair is falling off, that it is what it is. But you don't want to shave your hair bald, neither do you want to shave off your beard. So I see you kind of got a little beard coming in. Right. You want to keep it. You could line it up, trim it up, but you can't shave it off. Right. That makes sense. You all, you're able to do that for God. Okay, all praises. Read on. You should not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. You got tax? You was planning on getting tax? All praise. That's a commandment by God. Do you smoke? No, I, no smoking at all. Any drugs? All praise to the Most High. All right, now this is the last one. Are those your, I'm saying, those your friends over there? Is that your girl or just friends? Right, right. How y'all become friends? School, oh, what school you go to? Okay, okay, okay. Now we gotta bring this out, brother, because we love you and we care for you. Right. All right, because the Lord commanded us, we have to be amongst our own people. Right. All right, read this. Number six, thirteen. Chapter right. six, and verse thirteen. Yeah. Separate thyself from thy enemy. The Lord say. Separate thyself from thy enemy. God say. Separate thyself from thy enemy. Now, brother, who would you say is your enemy? Who you say is who is your enemy? Yeah. You don't think you have enemies? Now, in all actual, what if we? Because we actually do have enemies, brother. According to the Bible, give me Deuteronomy 2868, we do have enemies. Now, uh, us in our natural wicked estate, we think somebody of our own people is our enemy. Right. Somebody from this block is our enemy. Right. In this block, in this neighborhood. When that's not really our enemies, we actually have a bigger enemy than what we think we have. Do you, if you had to take a guess, do you know who that enemy is? There you go, brother. When we got to go to in depth. Who, who did this to us? All right, who put these chains around us? Because a friend wouldn't do that to you. Right. They did that to us. Now you can say, well, hold on, that was all the way back then. But guess what? They still doing it to this day. Right. Brother, uh, South Carolina, I believe he just got lynched. And Georgia, he was a trucker, you know, from Chicago. He got lynched. So would you acknowledge that these people and their historical record of what they have done to us and what they still have done to us are our enemies? You admit that. So why why hang with them? Right. Right. Because in reality you just think, okay, they just cool, they're the friends. Not all people are like that. Right. But let's go back 50 years, brother. You couldn't hang with them at all. Right. And if you were even caught with them, guess what you would be? 
You you will be lynched. You know about Emmett, you heard about Emmett Till, right? He was from Chicago. His people yep. was. Do you know the woman that said that he whistled at her came out later and said he didn't do it? And what crime happened to her for that? Nothing. Sir. So what does that tell you? Now we might not look at it as it's a big deal, but that's what that's when your spiritual eyes start to open up. You gotta pay it, you gotta wake up spiritually and start paying attention to what's really going on. Cause this is a, a simulation. But once you wake up, you actually start to see, wow, I didn't look at it like that, but this is how it is. You watch that movie Get Out? What you think about that movie? Huh? You said what? Oh, it's interesting. Brother, that movie is based on a true story. You know that, right? You didn't know that? It's absolutely. They 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 taken uh, Pacific our Pacific races, and they're taking their organs, right. eyeballs, certain right. body parts that they can't achieve. And guess what? They putting that and they doing transplants. So you have something? Yeah, that's why I want to say that's why um, sex trafficking and kidnapping among so-called black women is very high and prevalent. This only happens to our people because they know that you know our our organs and our body is, is very you know is different from them. So. Right. You watch Daddy Daddy's Little Girls, right? If you were, it was a Tyler Perry movie, Daddy's Little Girl, but you remember that with Monty, you know, he was dealing with this, you know, this white woman, and you know, her dad came in. And that was, they was messing with each other and then the daughter switched up in front of her dad and said, you know, he raped me. And guess what, he went to jail, he was trying to fight for his kids and you know it all worked out in the end, but you know a lot of men don't come back from that R word. All it takes is, that's what he did and it is what it is. So we just want you to, out of love brother, we want you to be circumspect and be on your P's and Q's. You want to be around with you, yo, amongst your own people, your real brothers, your real sisters. Although we messed up as a people, you want to choose the right ones amongst our people. All right, that makes sense. You got any questions? Yo, what's your name? Taiwan. All right, Taz. Do you remember your, you remember your nationality where you go? Judah. Okay, that's your tribe. Judah is the tribe, but what's your nationality? No, that's the oppressed, that's the nationality our oppressor gave us. It's an Israelite. You an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right. So we got a YouTube channel on there. Check out that information. We got tons. Watch those videos, but have your Bible out at the same time. So when all of the verses that we bringing out, you can just start reading in your Bible and you're going to see everything's going to start to connect the dots. Right. All right, and, and separate, brother. Trust me. All right. All right, brother. Yeah. Oh, praise to the inside. All right, Lord willing to brother Harkin, man. All right, we think he got very much. All right, Jacob needs to be gang. What is that? Yeah. That's a damn killer clown, man. All right. And he, hey, that brother got potential. You know, he hearkening. We know deep down inside in this head, he know what we saying is true. He know he can see that type of spirit. He's conscious enough to enough to know where his enemy is. Hmm? Yeah, those girls, they like him. That's all that is. All right, they like Jake, man. Right. All right. They like Jake. Hey, that's a that's really just lust. Right. All right. You get trapped up in that lust, man. God knows what could happen. Yeah, you turn, you turned out. Now you getting, you know, you dying your hair, all blonde, saying, yeah, "I'm just can't just just finding myself." All right. You damn dying your whole head, blonde. Messing around with either of us. All right. Damn getting handcuffed. All right. You in this weird act. And lewd act. You listening to damn emo music, gothic music. All right. Damn wearing the all black with the all black boots. The all black down. Everything is all black. Yeah, gothic. 
getting that big hole in your yeah, ear. Yeah, you got the big hole in your ear now. With the black now. What's the name? Hey, that's what the heathens could do. That's why the Lord said, hey, learn not the way of the heathens, right? Right. Because the heathens, you get joined to the heathens. Give me uh, First Maccabees 141. You get joined to the heathens. Hey, for some reason, our people always start picking up the heathens' customs. All right. Start talking like them, acting like them. It was from the time certain Jakes I grew up with. What's going on, brother? Certain Jakes I grew up with, they wanted to be like the so-called white people and be perfect. Brother. What's going on, King? You're an Israelite, according to the Bible. You got to repent and keep the commandments. All right, we always take on these people's customs. You got Jake want to do karate, all right, and learn Tai Chi. Now he's going over there to Hong Kong. He's celebrating the year of the rat, all right? Sitting down with a Chinese garment, all right? Now he's a samurai now. He leveled up in his thing. So do not follow the ways of the heathens. You don't want it next to you, know, like Christmas, all right, you're sitting and coming home from work. Instead of reading, praying, fasting, come from work, then I'm turning on the TV, Home Alone coming on. You're getting the eggnog, all right, turning on the Christmas lights, all right. Hey, that's how Jake do it, man. They do it big for Christmas. They turn on the Christmas lights, turn on the Home Alone classic, all right. The damn Grinch. Charlie Brown. Get they get Charlie <laughs> Damn Charlie Brown. Getting the cookies. Damn Jake. No beard on his face. Dipping the cookies in the milk. Alright. Watching the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Yeah, Christmas story. Smiling extra hard. Smiling and cheesing. <laughs> Alright. Toes. Hey, the Lord not doing that, man. The Lord not dealing with that. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's off. It's off. Alright, enjoying everything. Right. It's, the Lord not dealing with that. That's the that's the way of the heathens. Right. Alright, what else Jake follow? Oh yeah, they follow the way the Arabs, they say uh what they say down um, do Asalaam Alaikum. Yeah, alaikum Asalaam Alaikum. Alright. Damn got the damn What's the name on his head? Remember that one Jake that was walking, marching with the Palestinians? Uh, he had yeah. the kufi on his head. <laughs> and we wanted to choke him up and grab him out the crowd and do something to him, man. Right? right? Then whipping the kufi like this. All right. Looking back and forth, whipping the kufi like this. <laughs> and we wanted to grab him up by his neck, man. So the Lord, again, follow not the ways of the heathen. Right. Give me that in Jeremiah 10 and 2 real quick before you bring this up. It's the book of Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 2. Bring it out. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. What did God say? Learn not the way of the heathen. No, follow the ways of the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen. Right, we always, for some reason, we love to learn the way of the heathen. Right? Give me 1 Maccabees 1 and 10. 1 and 11. Maccabees 1 and 11. First Maccabees 1 and 11. Bring it in out. those days when they're out of Israel, wicked men. It says what? In those days when out of Israel, wicked men, you know who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. What did they say? Let us go and make, make a covenant, covenant with, with the heathen. All right, so they wanted to say, hey, let us make a covenant with What's the heathen. What's up, brother? All right. Why would you want to make a covenant with the heathen? That's like us, we just go into the Canaanites and say, let's make a covenant together. Make a league together. All of my sons that I have, I'm going to give them to your daughters. You're going to give me all of your daughters to my sons. Why do you want to make a covenant with the Moabites for? All right? Read on. We make a covenant with the heathen that are around about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. We have what? We, we have, have had, had much, much sorrow. sorrow. See that? We have had much sorrow. The heathen, they've been away, man. I'm getting sad. All right. I need to be around some heathens. Oh, you a heathen, man. You love the heathen. You love, you have Stockholm Center. Right. You love your oppressor. Right. You want to serve your, you, you put the all in your ear. You want to serve your master forever. All right, just like the brother in the military said, oh, yeah. uh, my 20 years, faithful. You wasted 20 years of your life. 
Alright? To fight for a country that doesn't care about you. To fight for a country that put your people in captivity. Right. And you say, yeah, I'm gonna just go in there and knock my 20 years and die in this thing. Alright. You dying for the wrong thing, man. You should be dying for the Lord. Right. Right. You should be dying for righteousness. Right. For the truth. Right. Standing up for what's right, but yet or yet, you are allowed to die for the military. Right. That you could die in. Read on. So this device plays him well. Then certain of the people were so forward there, herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathen. Right, so they, after they got pleased them well, you yeah, had Israelites, they went out to the king and they asked the king, hey, can we get permission to do what y'all are doing? Now they celebrating the race, the, the Greek god Zeus. All right. Now they want to uh, be in the damn, uh, be a gladiator now. All right. They want to get in the damn arena, start fighting against the lions. That's what the heathen was doing, man. They was throwing people in there with lions. All right. And they was down fighting the lions in the damn Coliseum. Since you got a minute for the word, Chicago hat. Get out. Are they throwing them in there? They want to fight against the lions and the tigers? Hey, the heathen, only heathens do stuff like that, man. We're not finna just fight a lion for no reason. Just get off here. I want to fight a lion. All right? And the tiger. And then I'm get demolished. <laughs> All right? Only Esau had that type of wild spirit. Hey, how you doing, bro? Yeah, I'm gonna jump you off the Grand Canyon. All right. All right. Jacob's not thinking about jumping off the Grand Canyon. I'm gonna jump off the Eiffel Tower on the little zip line. And if I do die, I do die. But if not, I'm gonna try to make it. Yeah, that's that Steve O. Got a gas mask. See that? Right. That Steve or that Jeff Hardy spirit. Right. Just oh. jumping off this stuff. If you make it, you make it. Right. Not it is what it is. Right. <laughs> that's what Jeff Hardy was doing, man. Yeah. He's jumping off a building. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Read on. Right. 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 Well, Paul, they built a place of emphasize at Jerusalem, according to the customs of the heathen. So they, these people, they went out the way, they started building uh, a place of exercise. What is that place of exercise? Gym, uh, that's where you get the gymnasium from. Now in the gym, nowadays, okay, you have people working out, but it's not the same that was in the gym back then. Back then, you had nothing. Men all had their shirts off in the gym. Men, they come in there lusting. All right, hey, see if you can lift this for me. All right, and you're looking at how you flex it out of your muscles. Hey, they was All right, they was off in there. All right. Hey, it was uh, on the football game this uh, Thursday. It was one of the referees came behind the, uh, he came behind the, uh, he came behind the quarterback like this. Yeah. He touched him after he uh, called like a uh, like, uh, timeout. He touched him. Mm -hmm. And then when the guy got up, like, okay, he humped him. So yeah. Like this, yeah. Yeah. That's what they get into, man. That's what, how, that's what go down in the so called locker room. I know, hey, when gym class in my locker room used to be hard, man. There used to be this one Edomite who kind of come in there with his shirt off. He's slapping people on the back. Right. Hey, and what you gonna do about it? Because he was the wrestling cat. All right, he's slapping people on the back to giving them hugs with his shirt off, man. That's how they get down in the gym. They start pumping people in there, all right, and laughing and you know, running off. But hey, that was the spirit of the gymnasium. You know what? <laughs> and made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the Holy Covenant. Yeah, what? And forsook the, the Holy Covenant. Covenant. God, people do. And forsook the Holy Covenant. Right, so they forsook the Holy Covenant. Yeah, right? I need that. All right. Made themselves places of exercise. Uncircumcised. Oh, How you gonna get circumcised and you know, try to uncircumcise yourself? What? Not circumcise your kids. And guess what? Now you now you uh, forsook the law of the Lord. Read on. 
and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. And were what? And were sold, sold to, to do mischief. mischief. So if you join yourself to the heathen, it's only a, a, a matter of time before you, you sell yourself to do mischief, man. Mischief is gonna come when you're around heathens. It's a different spirit around. Them. You know, heathens, they, they are. What? It's 10 times worse than us. That's why we telling them, brother, hey, separate, man. It's a different spirit when you being around your people. All right, you get self-worth, self-love. Start building. You try to, you know, you trying to do things for the community. The heathens, they all about money. Getting richer. They all about money and fulfilling their lust. And then um, going to parties. All right, going to parties, freaking off at the parties. Right. Doing the little DJ. All right. We got the DJ. See, yeah. All right. They remixing it. All right. They doing all type of heated popping mollies and Xanax. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That type of spirit. Oh. All right. They sort of, I mean, the heat is into all the time, but they are popping now, sniffing lines of coke. Right. All right, kind of getting they fixed. Yeah, this is gnarly, bro. <laughs> oh. All right, it's totally gnarly, dude. It's all. That's how the heat is operating. Read on. Now, when the kingdom was established before Antiochus, he thought to reign over Egypt. That he might have the dominion of two realms. Jump down to verse 41. Verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. That what? That, that all, all should be, be one, one people. people. Is America one? That, that all, all should be, be one, one people. people. And just like it was during the time of the king, yeah. it's like that what? during the time now, man. Right. Right. Yes, America has allowed all nations to come in and get drunk off the wine. All right, we can now be kumbaya with everybody. Everybody. We have nine denominations. Uh, so everybody, so many, so many. any nation, you can sit in the church. You Chinese, you can sit in the same world as an Edomite. Edomite sit in the same world as a Jake. Jake sit in the same world as a damn, uh, next to a damn Eminem. Right. Then Ishmael is in there. It's all type of confusion. Right. That's why they, that's why these corporations of America they get bring in different type of races, and it's all gonna lead to confusion. You see what happens when we try to build up our own thing, man. Our own communities, right. own job systems. Right. They flood it and they burn it down because they don't want to see us come together. Right. right. We're that nation that's not desired in Zephaniah chapter 2 and 1. They don't want us to come together underneath the hand of the Most High. What do they want us to do? They want us to cut us off from being a nation. They want us to, they want to cut us off from our Most High God. They want to cut us off from the law, statutes, and commandments, which is going to cause us to prosper. They really, they want us to be underneath the curses forever. They think they're gonna oppress us forever, bro. They think, these people think slavery is, is coming back. And we're gonna put chains on them again, all right? But guess what, we living in the days where the Lord is showing his hand, man. The Lord is bringing his people back. He causing all of the tribes of Jacob to gather together, man. Hey, and it's true. We could be in the same room. We got a brother from the tribe of Judah. We got a brother from the tribe of Benjamin. You got a brother from the tribe of Levi. Right. You got a brother from the tribe of Issachar. Right. You got a brother from the tribe of Gad. Right. You got a brother from the tribe of Reuben. Right. You got a brother from the tribe of Simeon. Right. You got a brother from the tribe of Manasseh. Right. You got a brother from the tribe of Nathali. Right. You got a brother from the tribe of Asher. Right. And you got brothers from all of these different tribes, man, coming together, serving the most high God. Right. right. So read on. Verse 42. And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agree. Oh, what? So, so all the heathen agree. What are the heathen doing right now? So, so all, all the, the heathen, heathen agree. agree. And right now they sitting down at a big table, and they all agree. They all agreeing. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna all come together. We're gonna take these people away from their laws, right. and we're gonna try to set up more things to have them on documents. Right. All right. We're gonna set up certain things to get these. Israelites jammed up. Right. 
they throwing out, they even making create new holidays, man. When I was growing up, it wasn't no so called damn Juneteenth. I don't know if brothers remember that, but I didn't remember a Juneteenth. So they throwing these new holidays out here. Right. These new uh, trends out here. New drugs they throwing out. And it's all to destroy us. Read one. According to the commandment of the king, yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. Consented to what? Consented, consented to, to his religion. religion. And now they have Israelites consented to their religion. Right? That's why Jake is in Christianity, Islam, then up Hinduism. All right. All right. Egypt, Tadiq. All right. What else? Jake is in too. Uh, atheists. All right. Roman Catholicism. Right. So that's us consenting to their religion. Right. Following the ways of the Greeks, believing in Hercules and Hades. Yeah, he's the god of the underworld. All right, you got Jake's they, in Egyptology. They believe cats is the god of the, un, of the, uh, of the realm to come. All right, a cat. Nothing but cats in there. Cats. All right, and they all have meanings. A black cat, that means protection. A white cat, that just means down. Um, all right, that's what they going into. Read on. Yeah, many also of the Israelites consider to his religion and sacrifice unto idols. Yeah, what? And, and sacrifice, sacrifice unto, unto idols. idols. What were they doing? And, and sacrifice, sacrifice unto, unto idols. idols. So back there, they were actually sacrificing to Pachides. Right. Uh, putting up something for them. Um, what's her name? What's that, uh, <laughs> Diana. It's another woman named in uh, Greek mythology. Not Aphrodite. Uh, she played one. Yeah, no, one Medusa. Medusa. They was probably doing that to Medusa too. Um, what's her name? She played that so-called Wonder Woman. Yeah, Athena. That's her name. You got Greek goddess Athena. All right. So they was all they was sacrificing it to their gods, man. Putting them pork upon the altar. In modern day, our people sacrifice to these gods all the time. They make their cell phone their god. Give all that time to their cell phone. Give off that. Give all that time to the social media, right? The trends that's going on. Want to be a part? They serving the heathens, guys. Like we was going over Christmas. Jake dressing up in Halloween. All right. Then putting on a Michael Myers mask. All right, with a butcher knife in his hand, a Jason mask. So we going, we, we going into all this idolatry when we have our own God to serve. We have our own law, and our God is just. Right. The God of this world, Satan, and these idols, they're not going to do the things that the Most High is going to do for you, man. And the Most High is going to provide. When you serving the Lord, you're going to get benefits. You serving these other guys, you're not going to get benefits. When you serve Satan, you get the benefits of this world. Let go of his hand. <laughs> Hey, let go of his hand. See that? Another man holding. Come on, man. Y'all both fly. Y'all both six feet something. Hold hand. That's the way. That's the way of the heathens. Right. They said, guess what? Hey, now you could be with another man if you want. All right. If you're a woman, hey, you know, Jake. Now Jake into that. Right? Like my women are kissing each other. All right. That's a heathenist custom. Are right, you in a bed dealing with orgies? Have six women in the bed with you at the same time. All right. And in ancient Rome and Greek, they used to do that, man. They used to all come in one building. They used to all just have sexual intercourse. All right. With the music playing. All right. Those are the first Diddy parties. Yeah, those are the original first Diddy parties. They started in ancient Greece. Back then, they used to all use trans washrooms, and they used to use wood and dip it in vinegar to wipe their butt. I see that. I ain't know that. Yeah, dirty. Yeah, even uh, on some of the um, some of the paintings on the, uh, the walls of Babylon, they still have uh, men and women with multiple other men and women uh, in a place, you know, having sexual intercourse. All right, and this is literally grafted in. 
So they, that's what they was into, man. That was the, like your brother said, the, the Diddy party before Diddy start in it, practicing in it. Right. Yeah, Zeus party. Read one. And profane the Sabbath. They did what? And profane the Sabbath. They stopped keeping the Sabbath to keep the days that the heathens had set up. All right. And the Sabbath, that's a holy day. Like we said, it's certain benefits that you get from serving the Most High God, man. The Lord gonna make sure, hey, the food gonna take 10 times better. You're gonna appreciate what you have 10 times more. All right. You're gonna have your trust boost up 10 times more in the Lord. The Lord gonna put a, a force field around you of safety and protection. Have angels around you. You serving these other gods, you still gonna be able to get jammed up, man. Right. When you serving the Most High, the Lord not gonna jam you up. Right. The Lord not just gonna leave you out there hanging. You serving Satan. Those, th all these things can still happen to you. All right. Read on. For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that they shall follow the strange laws of the land. They shall what? That they shall follow the strange laws of the land. One of those strange laws was you have to shave off your head and you have to shave off your beard. All right. You want to become one of those? All right. You got to shave off your head and beard. Also, you want to become one of us, you got to get this Greek symbol and bread it into your arm. All right, you got to put that on your chest. That's the damn modern day uh, fraternities, man. You got to get this branding on to your arm. Now you, now you can uh, officially be one of us. Right. You know how slow you got to be to and brand something with a hot iron into your arm? Marking your body up. That's the value of the temple, man. Right. That's marking your body up. Jakes, they started doing that. Then they damn marching with the boots. All right. But they shirt off, doing a damn, acting like a damn bird. All right. Come with some tea. Ooh. All right. That's all. Those are the ways of the Greeks. Read on. Verse 45. And forbid burnt offerings. And sacrifice. What? And, and sacrifice. So they forbid it to burnt offering. You can't do a burnt offering. All right, when these feasts, when the Pentecost come up, you can't make an offering to them. Oh, you find out that you're making an offering, and you're going to get put to death. And we, during the time of Daniel, and you couldn't pray to the Most High God. All right, give me uh, Daniel chapter 6. Give me Daniel chapter 6, to start at verse 4. Chapter 6, verse 4. Bring it out. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel. They did what? Sought, sought to, to find, find occasion, occasion against, against Daniel. Daniel. They tried to find something they could come up with to entrap Daniel. What's going on, brother? Did you know you was an Israelite according to the Bible? All right, we got to repent and keep the commandments. So they tried to find something against Daniel to, because Daniel was so innocent, they said, man, we got to come up with something like that. We know it's something that he's doing that we could get him with. We don't want. But they, but they could find none occasion. They could what? But, but they, they could find none occasion. occasion. What? Nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, ne neither was there any error or fault found in him. What? Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him. Concerning the law of his God. Concerning the what? Concerning, Concerning the, the law, law of his God. God. That's what they. Uh, that's what our people did. That's what the heathens did to our people. Oh, we can't find nothing in them. You know what? You know what we gonna do? We gonna make it hard for him to serve the Most High. All right. We gonna make him. We gonna. He wanna be with one of us. All right. He think he finna just serve the Most High with all joyfulness of heart. All right. Nah. It don't work like that. You about to struggle to serve the Lord. Alright. That's all, man. We should be able to serve the most side without any stress, any care, worrying about the society, worrying about the things that's going on in this world. Alright. We should be able to go to to the most go to our jobs thinking about the most side, man. You should have things set up at your workplace that's trying to cause you to separate from the most high God. But again, this is what these people do. They set these things up at your job, the workplace, all right? Then the stores, TV, 
it's all trying to fly an occasion against you. And the only way they can apply an occasion is if it's between you and the most side. That's the only way they can try to get you distracted. Because they know they can't get you distracted with anything else. Because we don't give a damn about it no more. Right. We only care about this truth. Right. So read on. So, oh, Daniel? Read on, Daniel. Verse 5. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against the. Uh, uh, Except we find it against him concerning the law of God. Right. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. Right. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall take a petition of any god or man of any what? of, of any, any god, god or man what's going on during the time of day? of any, any god, god or man right? for 30 days for what? for, for 30, 30 days, days you know save of thee O king he shall be cast into the den of lions he shall be what? he, he shall, shall be, be cast, cast into the den, den of lions, lions. imagine Donald Trump comes out alright the damn citizens, the captains, the officers, the, the, the manager at your job. They say, hey, nobody could do, make no petition, petition to any other God but Donald Trump. For 30 days, they will be cast into a man. They basically say, hey, you can't pray to the most High for 30 days. Or you're going to be cast into a demo lines. We better not hear you praying, worshiping. Calling upon a name, fast into him, or you're gonna be cast into the lions, man. And a lot of brothers, they'll kind of say, man, it's just 30 days, man. Oh. Alright. That's a whole month. Next month, I'll just throw up a prayer to the most I can. After oh. the 30 days over with. Hey, do you know what can happen to you if you go a whole week without praying? Right. Do you know what you would do? You would start, you would be back in them there, back into the world. Alright. You'll be back into your old man sins that you was doing. That's just off one week. Off one day of not praying, your damn head ain't gonna start hurting. Right. Not gonna be feeling well. Right. All right, gonna be jammed up. How much right. more for one week? How much more for 30 days? So read on. Verse eight. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Right, because they had a specific law that if they I write something down according to the Persian and Medes, nobody can alter this law. Nobody. All right? And that's all, because you might, you know, you might think, say, you know what, this is kind of too harsh. Let me change it up. They write something down, nobody can change it. Read on. Verse 9, Wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into the house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, right. he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed. And did what? And, and prayed. prayed. No, not pray. And, and prayed. prayed. Worship King Darius. And, and prayed. prayed. Worship the other God. And, and prayed. So as soon as Daniel heard that this decree was made, he said, man, I'm not dealing with that. He opened up this door to Jerusalem, got down on his knees three times a day, and he was praying up to the Most High, man. Regardless of the decree, and he didn't give a damn about the decree, man. He didn't give a damn about serving King Darius. He didn't give a damn about considering to the, the, the religious of the Persian and Medes and their commandments. He got down on his knees, opened up his windows to Jerusalem, and prayed three times a day. All right. Read on. And gave thanks before his God as he did a four time. As he what? As, as he, he did, did a four time. time. So he was acting like, hey, nothing never happened. I'm going to keep doing the same thing I'm doing, regardless of a decree. And this is how our people have to operate, man. This is how we have to operate in this truth. This is this how the Israelites have to operate. But the Israelites, they show shaking to and fro. They easily influence. Let one of these heathens come over here and say, yeah, you got to do this for a million dollars. How many people would do it? 
You got people, they selling out their soul for millions. They saying, you know what? In order to be big, you got to kill your mom. And guess what? They kill their mom. In order to make it this big, you got to sacrifice somebody in your family. All right? So read on. He, and read on. It says, then these... Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. That's all. So how do you know when you pray, you know, you're going to pray in your secret, in your, in your closet, man. You're going to pray when it's kind of just you and the most high. So that means they had to be watching Daniel. Right? They climbing up in this lattice on the window. All right? They probably got the binoculars. All right? They saying, hold on. Is he praying? Oh, yep. Yep, we got him. Yep. So they came, they damn knocking on the door. Then you probably said, what the hell is this? All right, they found that he was praying. What did they do? Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Has thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any God or a man within 30 days, save, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, that Daniel, which is of the captivity of the children of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed. Nor the what? Nor the decree that thou hast signed. But make it the partition three times a day. What? But make it his partition, partition three times a day. So they hey, they snitched on Dan for like a better term. All right, they spied him out. They asked the king, hey king, didn't you say uh, anybody, you know, in that 30 days dealing with any other gods that they would be cast into the lion's den? And the king said, yes, that's true. And they say, well, okay, we just saw Daniel praying three times a day to his God. Read on. Then the king, when he heard these words, was so displeased with himself. Was what? Was so displeased with himself. Because he was displeased. Why? Because he made Daniel them, he made Daniel the president. Daniel was one of the presidents, man. When you read verse one on down. The most I promoted Daniel to honor amongst the kingdom of the Persian and Medes. So he heard that he kind of got displeased. He said, damn. That's like your boss, you a good worker. Come in on time, you do what you're supposed to do. Your boss come in, he find out that you a black Hebrew Israelite. All right, he gonna get sore displeased in his heart. Say, damn, my best worker hates my race. He said, he said our people is going into, my people is going into captivity. He gonna be displeased in his heart, man. Read the one. And set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored to the going down of the sun to deliver him. All right. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persian is that no decree nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed. All right, and that's why we go back to that law of the Persian and Medes was author of not, is not, wasn't a wise thing to do. Because he found out that the own law that he made, that he couldn't even go back on. Again, if you make something, you might make something through a hasty decision. You want to make sure you could go back and at least kind of make it right. Right. But according to the Persian and Medes, their law, which ought to have not, whatever they put down, that stands, it's stamped there. They can't go back on that. So he tried to deliver Daniel. But then he, he, the Mies men, they saw him, hold on, King, this is the, this is the uh, decree that nobody can alter, not even yourself. Read on. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. See that? So they locked Daniel up. They put a stone over it. 
He was in there with nothing but lines. What's going on, brother? You know your nationality? All right. So guess what, man? They put a stone over it, surrounded Daniel by lions. And guess what? He was in a lion's den. All right. For some knights. And guess what? They probably had them, when you read the Belt and the Dragon, they had those lions in a different account. They had those lions starve themselves. They were starving the lions. So when they put somebody in there, the lions is already going to be hungry. All right. They're going to devour you. But guess what? Daniel, let's see what Daniel did. Read on. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went before and his sleep went from him. Right. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the lion of unto the den of lions. Right. And when he came into the den, he cried with a lam lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth. Have what? And has shut, shut the, the lion's mouth. mouth. Why should we be true to the most high God? And, and has shut, shut the, the lion's, lion's mouth. mouth. Again, a lot of brothers, they get into the lion's den, they would have folded, huh? They would have started crying, losing their mind, wiggling out, saying, man, get off me, man. All right. That's how Jake is, man. But guess what? Hey, Daniel, he was sitting there patient, innocent, waiting on the Lord to save him because guess what? He didn't do anything wrong. David, I mean, Daniel was saved out of the mouth of the lions due to his innocence. All right. And guess what? The most high. He shut the mouth of the lions. So that's how you know the Lord, and the Lord, he actually controls these beasts. Right, give me some, chapter 104 and 29. All right, the most I control is these beasts, man. You got Jake, they running from dogs. All right, they see a damn uh, pit bull, they start running, taking off running. And it's up to the most I, to put that spirit on that dog, whether it's gonna bite you or not. If it did bite you, guess what? The Lord wanted that to happen. Right. If it don't bite you, the most I put it in that spirit of that dog to not bite you. Right. You get around a scorpion and it bites you, hey, the most I put it in that spirit of that scorpion. Right. That's the spirit that's created for vengeance. But if it le if it lets you alone, hey, the Lord did that. All right, so it's really up to the most I because he controls all of these things. Now don't go go and tempt the rattlesnake. Alright, you see it was warning you, shaking his tail. Say it's up to the moon side. Alright, you tempting the Lord now, brother. Alright. Next thing you know, you got seven minutes to live. Alright. So read this. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 21. Get out. The young lions roar after their prey. It says what? The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat. From God. From what? From God. So lions, they actually seek their meat from the Most High God. All right? And the Most High feeds the lions. So if the Lord didn't want the lions to eat that day, and the Most High could shut up their mouth. All right? Just like sometimes you might want to eat the whole time you get to the crib. You're like, I'm not even hungry. All right. You don't eat for the rest of the night. That's the Most High shutting up your appetite. And guess what? It causing you not to eat. So the Lord shut the mouth of these lions so that they wouldn't eat any. Read on. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency, innocency was found in me. It says what? Innocency was found in me and also before thee. O king, have I done so, have I done no hurt? Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him. And no what? And no, no manner, manner of hurt, hurt was found upon, upon him. him. Yeah, no manner of hurt is going to be found upon you if you just trust in the most high God. All right. If you don't bow down to the heathens, man. A lot of brothers, like we said, they would have bowed down to the heathens, man. 
All right, even in the situation with Mordecai, a lot of brothers, Haman said bow down, you a bow down to him. A lot of jakes there kind of, okay. Start bowing down to Haman, all right, worshiping him. Just because he could get you up out of there. Hey, guess what? It's, we don't give a damn if you can get us up out of there, man. We gonna still pray to the Most High God. Right. We gonna still read His Word. We still gonna keep the commandments. We not gonna stop breaking the commandments because you said we can't follow the commandments of the Lord. Hey, who are you? Who are you to say we can't follow God's commandments? Who are you to tell us not to follow the Most High? Right. Give me uh First Maccabees chapter two and six. You're a simple man. You're a man that's oh, a wicked man. Why would we listen to a, what a wicked man's advice is and counsel is? If you wicked through the spirit, we're not really listening to your counsel, man. Read this. First Maccabees 2 and 60. Bring it out. Daniel, for his innocency, was delivered from the mouth of lions. Right. And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. Read one. Fear not, then the words of a sinful man. What the Lord say? Fear not, then the words of a sinful man. Your, job, your boss said your job. Fear not, then the words of a sinful man. So you're not supposed to fear the words of a sinful man. All right. Well, God is what he, he might say. I could put in this word. I can get you terminated right now. All right. A lot of brothers there start. Oh my God. I could get terminated. All right. All right. I could lose my. I'm gonna feed my family. How I'm gonna do this? I say I could take away your car right now. I could send you to jail right now. Get you locked up for the rest of your life. And we're not fearing those words, man. At all. You know what we gonna tell him? Hey, do as thou wilt, man. Thou sayest. All right. You think uh, Christ feared the words of Pontius Pilate? Didn't Pontius Pilate say, hey, hey, I got the right to lock you. I got the right to crucify you right now. What did the Lord say to Pontius Pilate? All right. He said he that uh, crucified me, paraphrasing, have the greater condemnation. And he left it at that. So even Yahweh Shai didn't feel the words of sinful men. Huh? Again, that's a man that's 10 times more sinful than you are. And we in this truth. And we're still sinful. Right. We in this truth, we still trying to keep the laws to the best of our ability. All right. All right. Stay, in, stay inside the faith. Build up our faith. And you're going to listen to a man that's 10 times worse than you, that's after work, going home to his computer, looking at little girls. All right. You going to fear that type of man? Right. That's down going to the mall pretending to be Santa Claus so little kids can sit on his lap. Right. That's having in a damn affair with the damn pastor's wife. We're not fearing those type of men, huh? We're not fearing the words of a man that's eating pork. We're not fearing, fearing the words of a man that don't got his damn beard on his face. Right. We're not fearing a man that don't keep no commandments. We're not dealing with that. So read that part again. For not then the words of a fear not then the words of a sinful man, for his glory shall be dung and worm. Says what? For his glory shall be dung and worm. His glory, the end of that man is gonna be dung and worm. That man is gonna die a horrible death. Alright? The Lord is gonna send an evil angel to kill that man. That's why you gotta have the preeminence. You gotta keep within thyself all the preeminence, man. You gotta stand for something, man. You gotta be bold for the word of the Lord. All right. All right. Give me Romans 1 and 16. Alright, give me Romans chapter 1 and 16. The book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. No. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of a Mashiach. What did Paul say? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of a Mashiach. Read that again. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of a Mashiach. For it is the power of God. It is what? For it is the power of God. Unto salvation to everyone that believe it. That, so guess what Paul said? Hey, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. If you're ashamed of the gospel, guess what? This truth is not for you, huh? Anytime you're ashamed of these words, 
Right, give me Mark 8 and 31. Anytime you're ashamed of these words, you ashamed of how people might make you feel. You might be ashamed of how your family looks at you. You ashamed of somebody said something about this truth. Hey, you're not built for this thing, man. Right. Because Paul said, hey, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. This is the power of God, which bring. this is literally the power of God, which bring of salvation. This is what gets you saved at the end of the day. Right. This not getting them saved if they don't keep these things. Why are you worried about what they thinking about you? Why are you worried about what they're saying about you? This is your salvation. Right. All right. Read on. Read this. And, uh, yeah, read that in Mark chapter 8 and 31. Book of Mark 8 and 31. Bring it out. Jump down to verse 38. Verse 38. Verse 38. Verse 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. So if you ashamed of these words, and this truth, and this, uh, hey, the Lord called this an adulterous and sinful generation, huh? If you're ashamed of these words, because what somebody else said in this generation, what did Christ say? Well, sisters, do y'all believe in God? Y'all believe in Christ? All right, y'all got to give us five minutes. Come back and hear his word. Five, five minutes. minutes. Five minutes. What you mean, hold on, sister? We out here for y'all. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna come back? Are you coming? Alright, we gonna hold you up to that. Alright. You say she said she promised. Alright. Give me the uh the No. No. Lock up. No. 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 Free the Israelites. Right. Right. From captivity. Right. Free the black and Spanish and Native Americans out of As he as he drives the rainbow. Alright, read this. Give me uh side right, 29. Right. Go free you. How are we gonna go back to Europe? You, you go back to Saudi Arabia. Right. I'm not from Saudi Arabia. You go back to wherever you're from. Alright. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 29, verse 2. Bring it out. Lend to thy neighbor in the time of his need, and pay thou thy neighbor again in due season. Read on. Keep thy word and deal faithfully with him. What the Lord say? Keep Free thy word and deal Free faithfully with him. So that sister that promised that she was gonna come back, hey, she gotta keep her word. She said she promised that she was gonna come back to get a word of the most high God. Now, really Of him also. Now, certain people with that Israelite just rolled past saying Free Palestine, a lot of brothers, they would have got a shame. Right. They would have got afraid. They would start wrapping up count. The energy would have got low. Uh. Alright, they would have started whispering. What the Lord said. Of him, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed. Shall the what? Shall the Son of Man be ashamed. Read that again. Shall the Son of Man be ashamed. What the Lord say? Shall the Son of Man be ashamed. So if you're ashamed of the Lord, guess what? The Lord gonna be ashamed. Right. That's like you with your homie and somebody else they make it funny of you and you sitting there laughing at them. Cause you kinda of scared of them. You kinda of scared you don't want them to Right, you don't you don't, you kinda of don't want them to get on you. So you kinda of just don't say nothing. You just kinda of sit back. God forbid a heathen just down talking about the Israelites, talking about this truth. And all of these blasphemous things, and you kind of just sit back with you know your tail tucked. Right. Not really saying. And you know the precepts too, and you kind of just don't say nothing. And give me Psalms 94 and 16. The Lord not dealing with that type of man, huh? Because you, yeah, you scared. You won't. You don't really. Def you won't defend your about you never try. Right. You only try to defend when you're around other brothers. Right. All right. When you're at camp. We are amongst a multitude of mighty men. Right. Read this. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Break it out. Who will rise up for me against the evildoer? What the Lord say? Who will rise up for me against the evildoer? Read that again. Who will rise up for me against the evildoer? Hey, so the Lord, he want to see who's going to rise up for him against the, against the evildoers, man. 
So you want to see who's going to keep his commandments in the valley of the shadow of death, man. In the valley of the shadow of darkness. He's going to see a who's going to stand up against the so-called Christian pastor, man. He want to see who's going to stand up against the wicked, man. Who's going to stand up against their family? Who's going to stand up against their job? Who's going to stand up against their friends? Hey, the Lord is watching and seeing these things, man. You go for the eyes of men, but at the end of the day, you can't fool the most high. The Lord is seeing all of these things. The angels is in every place beholding the good and the evil. So who's going to stand up against, for me against the evildoers we doing? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Against the what? Against, against the, the workers, workers of iniquity. iniquity. And a lot of brothers, they're going to faint against, when it, anytime the workers of iniquity come up, they're going to lose their mind, man. They gonna get faint-hearted, scary, not know what to do, deny the name of the Lord, right. damn sell out. But then you gonna have that righteous man. Give me wisdom, Solomon five and one. You gonna have that one righteous man that's gonna stand up in the spirit of boldness. Give me Second Timothy one and six, and he gonna proclaim the name of the Lord, man. And the Lord is gonna be looking at that man, and he's gonna deliver him. Right. Right, bring out Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1. Bring it out. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness. Stand in what? Stand, stand in great boldness. Be damn scared. Stand, stand in great boldness. Like whisper. Stand, stand in great boldness. Read. Before the face of such as have afflicted him. The righteous man, he gonna stand in boldness, man. All right. Then it said, the, then the Lord said in Proverbs 28 and 1, the righteous are as bold as a lion. If you're righteous, if you're doing what you're supposed to be, are you gonna be bold? You're gonna be fearless like a lion, standing up for the words of the Lord because you know everything that the Most High has said is faithful and true. Right. Bring this out, 2 Timothy 1 and 6. 2 Timothy 1 and 6. Get out. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Go on. For God have not given us the spirit of fear. Read that again. For Yahweh have not given us the spirit of fear. He gave us the spirit of scariness. For Yahweh have not given us the spirit of fear. For what? But of power. But of what? But of power. What did God say? But of power. And of love and of a sound mind. See that? So the Lord didn't give us the spirit of fear. All right. Of power, love, and of a sound mind. All right. You got a precept? Second Chronicles chapter 18 and verse 12. Bring it out. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word therefore, I pray thee, be like as one of theirs, and speak thou good. So this king, he wanted uh, the words of Micaiah to be good and peacefully, man. Speak like the rest of the prophets that speak good things and smooth things. Read on. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth. As the what? As, as the, the Lord, Lord liveth. Live the most I say. As, as the, the Lord, Lord liveth. Read. Even what my God saith, that will I speak. That will I what? That will I speak. No, we're going to tuck our tail. That will I speak. We're going to pack up. That will I speak. And whatever the Lord say, man, that's what we're going to speak. Man. Right. That's the said of the Lord. Right. Whether you like it, love it, believe it or not, whatever the Most High says, that's what we're going to speak, man. If you don't like, you got to take that up with the Most High God, man. Right. You got to take that up with the most, we got to take that up with the angels, man. Right. All right. The Lord is not dealing with madness and confusion. All right. And folly and vanity. Right. You got a precept? Look at Psalm chapter 56 and verse 4. Bring it out. In Yahweh, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. I will what? I will, I will not, not fear what flesh, flesh can do unto me. Give me Matthew chapter 10 and 28. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Right. Once you truly realize that man is dust and ashes, you will be scared of no man. All right? You will look at another man directly in his eyes. All right? Certain people, they can't really look you in your eyes. They look at you, they kind of turn them away. Oh, no, 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 no. No, the Lord not dealing with that, man. Right. He going to shake a brother's hand. Look at him in his eyes, man. Nah, that's, nah, that's the captain of the region. 
over the ten thousands of men. All right. I heard he put giants to flight. All right. Kind of looking at him. No, no. That's all. And we, if it's a brother like that, man, we we might lose our mind. Oh, he's, he's, he's slain gladiators and giants, and tigers. Surely this is the mightiest man. No, 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 don't look at me. Alright. Lord, I, man, read this. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 28. Bring it out. And fear not them which kill the body. What the Lord say? And fear, fear not them which kill the body. Because you don't have, especially as time goes on in the truth, certain men, they're going to threaten your life for the words of the Lord. They're going to say, guess what? I will kill you if you don't stop serving God. I'm going to put you in a den full of venomous snakes. All right? I'm going to put you underneath the water. I'm going to drown you. But guess what? The Lord said, fear not them which could kill the body. Because again, this body is temporary. This pain that you're going to get in this body is temporary. It's not forever, man. You kind of get cut. Yeah, it might sting for a while, but a week later it's going to heal. You're not going to feel that same cut two weeks later, man. You break a bone, yeah, you might feel it for a couple months, but guess what? A year later, it's gonna that pain is gonna go away. Right. You might have a sickness, you're gonna feel for a couple of weeks, but guess what? A couple of months later, you don't even remember that sickness no more. Right. So the Lord said, "Fear not them, which can kill the body, redoing, but are not able to kill the soul." Which are it says what? But are not able to kill the soul. And guess what? They're not able to kill your soul. They're not able to destroy your spirit. Read on. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. It says what? Which is able... But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Because the most I can destroy your soul and body. Alright. Not just one or the other. The Lord can do both. Right. Root your name out the book of life and kill you on this side. Right. That's who we gonna fear, man. Alright. We're gonna fear the judge of all. Right. We're gonna fear the most high God, man. Alright. Alright. In this omnipotency. Can he has all power? It doesn't, it's not a certain limit that he has to his power. He's all power. He's all present. Right. And he's all knowing. Man. Right. right. We'll rather fear that than to fear a damn Edomite. Right. That's threatening you about this damn job, man. Right. All right. Yeah, if you don't come in on this Shabbat, you can forget about it. You don't have to find another kid. All right. If you don't. One man late on the Shabbat. I want you here as soon as the sun goes down on Friday. That's hard. Or you're finished. You're cut. Oh. I think they kind of okay. And they fearing that, man. But it's just, but it's just it's for this time. Alright. Surely he won't do this next week. Then the next week. How you like working last Shabbat? Okay. We need you again right now. Again, this Shabbat. At sundown. Yeah, and you tell him, well, hold on, this one had to kind of be the last one. He, yeah, surely this is the last one. Come in the Shabbat, or it's over for you again. Then you go, okay, you go in on the Shabbat. Then next Shabbat come. All right. I know I said it was two Shabbats, but I need you again this Friday. All right. If you don't come on in this time, I know you came in the last, so you don't come on on this one. It's wraps for you. You won't be able to feed your family this off season. All right. And guess what, man? Brothers, they they down getting into it. They can. This all goes back to consent to the religion of the so-called white. Right. Consent to his rules instead of following the rules of the Lord. Give me Joshua chapter uh, one and verse nine. Give me Second Chronicles twenty and twenty-four. Get out. And when Judah came toward 
the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked into the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth. But it's 2 Chronicles 24 and 20. Right, 2 Chronicles 24 and 20. Chronicles 24 and verse number 20. Get out. And the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest, right. which stood above the people, and said unto them, Thus say Yahweh, why transgress ye the why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper. That ye cannot what? That, that ye, ye cannot, cannot prosper. prosper. So the Spirit came upon this man and said, why are y'all transgressing the commandments of the Lord that you can't prosper? Because when you keep these laws, no matter in what circumstance, you're gonna prosper after that, man. Next thing you know, hey, after Daniel, after he stayed faithful in the lions, then you don't even know, man. The most I the most I showed Daniel another vision right after that. The Lord probably couldn't show wasn't going to dare you for it. You probably wouldn't go show him that, uh, another vision. Right. Commit a word, fam. Commit a word. Yeah, show. Sure. Nevertheless, hey, the Lord after that he showed Daniel a vision of the end times, man. And he told him, guess what? He showed him a vision of the second wilderness in a thousand two hundred and ninety days. All right. And he's the only one that has that in that vision. So the Lord is going to cause you to prosper while you're keeping these commandments. Be Joshua 1 and 9. But if you transgress these commandments, you're not going to prosper. Read this. It's the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. Hello. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Right. Then, that verse 8. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Shall not what? Shall not, not depart, depart out of thy mouth. No, for 30 days. Shall not, not depart out of thy mouth. You know what? But thou shalt meditate de therein Man. day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. The Lord say. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And have what? And then thou shalt have good success. Good you know what? Good, good success. success. So the Lord said, guess what? You're gonna be made prosperous, and then you're gonna have good success afterward. All right. So we that's what we want to our people, man. Have good success, start to prosper. All right. It's all again from keeping the laws and not keeping the laws of the heathen. You got two options. You can serve, give me Matthew 6 and 24. You can serve the laws of the heathens or you can serve the laws of God. 